Okay, uh, video on pivot tables. Sometimes people uh, refer to these as cross tabs or the result of a pivot table is a cross tab report. Uh, but pivot tables are just a really easy way to quickly summarize or aggregate your data in a number of ways. Um, so we're gonna start, so I've got here, I just downloaded this off the interwebs. Um, this is a list of uh, most popular name, baby names by sex and mother's ethnic group in New York City. Uh, we go from 2011 down to 2014, 2014. Um, so we've got, uh, we've got the gender of the baby, presumably, not the gender of the mother. Uh, the ethnicity of the mother, the child's first name, and the count of how many. Uh, so this is in 2011, uh, of mother, Hispanic mothers, uh, female babies, 13 of them were named Geraldine. So that's what we're looking at. We have 8,000 some rows of this. So uh, let's get started on building a pivot table to show you what we can do. So I'm going to... Select cell eight one, control shift and my N key should take me takes me to the bottom of that data set. Wah wah. I had to remove a bunch of duplicates from here because it was messy. So let's go back the other way. Find the bottom of our data set. There we go. And now Come on. From here, from Zev, we can do Control Shift Home. Get the data, get the range we want. There you go. Insert pivot table. Um, so it gives me it's confirming the range. This is what I. This is the range I want. Um, if you also have a name table, uh, you can also just put that in there. Um, you can do it on a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. For here, we're just going to do it on a new worksheet. This is standard Excel uh, uh, input, the location where you put in a range if you want. Uh, but we're just going to do a new new worksheet until it's OK. All right, so then it brings up the pivot table builder window. So here is the sort of placeholder where our table is going to go. If this will change shapes and sizes. And over here is how we build our table. So let's say first, um, so what we have, we have filters, columns, rows, and values. So first, let's just do year of birth. Okay, so there we go. So it gives, gives us one row for each value, uh, each distinct value in that column. So in the year of birth, we have some values that say 2011, some values that say 2012, some values that say 2013, and some values that say 2014. Um, how many of each? Well, that's an excellent question. We could uh, we could skin this cat a number of ways. We could drag year of birth down here to values. And that's probably not right because our whole spreadsheet was only 8,000 rows. Uh, so we can see that's because this is summing, sum of year of birth right here, sum of year of birth. Ooh. If you ever lose your window, just click back on your pivot table. Uh, so that's not right. So what we actually want to do is we want to count. We're going to, we want to count how many times that value appeals appears. So we're going to go to value field settings and we have got a couple options, uh, show values by. And here we've got some. Instead, let's do count. There we go. Uh, so in 2011, it looks like there were 1,963 entries. That's not actually babies. 1,963 entries, 2,004 entries, and so on. 8,073. That's probably the. That should be the total number of rows. Uh, I'm not going back to the bottom. We'll trust it. Uh, so, um, so let's say, let's say instead, let's remove this. Let's say instead we want to see, okay, well, let's see how many babies this spreadsheet says were born that year. Well, that should be pretty easy because we have the count of how many babies were born with that name and the year of birth. So assuming this data set is complete, we should be able to just add up. If we take two, every value that's 2011 um, and add the count that ought to give us how many babies were born in 2011. You could do this with a count if uh, expression if you wanted, but uh, this is going to be way faster. 
Uh, so let's go here, sheet one. So we've got our years. So let's do count, sum of count. So that's actually what we want this time, right? Because we want to sum this count column. We want to sum uh, how many babies were born in 2011. So here we have 278,359 babies uh, born across those four years in New York City, um, which seems right to me. I'm not a demographer, but that seems like that number doesn't raise eyebrows. Uh, so let's see. Um, let's see what else we could do. So, all right, now let's say, let's say we want to see, all right, how many of those uh, were boys and how many were girls and how many were other genders, which I doubt appear on this spreadsheet. So let's add columns. Yes, we have our binary genders here. So for our columns, so all I did here, let's remove that. All I did here was grab this gender field. I'm just clicking on it and dragging it down into this columns box. Boom. Now it gives me a column for every value in that gender column. So we can see in 2011 there were 29,000. Let's do. Let's do this. Uh, there we go. Uh, there we go. This is easier to read. So there are 29,487 females born in 2011 uh, in New York City, 38,437 males. That's interesting. Um, wow. All of them are bigger. There you go. The more you know. Uh, so uh, you can see down in 2013, it also gives us the grand total. So 69,344. We already knew that. But now we can see what percent are male, what percent are female. Um, so let's say, um, so you can, let's see what else we could do. So now let's say, now let's say we want to see, okay, we don't care about gender anymore, but we care about ethnicity. We can drop that in. And here we go. You can see our columns. Uh, it looks like there's a little irregularity here. Looks like in 2012, yeah, in 2012, they used a different value for the Asian and Pacific Islander ethnicity. Ethnicity. Uh, the rest of these look, oh, no, yeah. So it looks like in 2000, it looks like they did not, we could clean this up if we wanted, but let's move on. Let's go back to gender. Um so one this will this will make it appear a little closer nicer. So one thing another so let's say we don't we we don't want to clean it up but we do want to look at ethnicity real quick. Here's something we can do. We can just drag ethnicity down here beneath year of birth in our rows box, drop it in there underneath. There we go. And then it drops it down here so we can see in 2011 there were 3418 female babies uh, who were born as Asian or Pacific Islanders. Um so we could also, uh, instead of putting that ethnicity in rows, we could drop it into this filters box. And now up here, we get a drop down where we can do our filters. Um, so let's say, so I usually do this, select multiple items. If you, you can select one, but this, I don't know why you wouldn't do this every time because it's more interesting. Um, so, um, Let's say, let's say we want to get rid of, oh God, um, let's say we want to ignore, uh, <laughs> there's no good way to say this. We're going to exclude Asian and Pacific Islanders from our data set, tell it okay. There we go. So now those are excluded. Um, and if we drag it back down here, you should be able to see that. Oh, we removed it from our filters. You can't do that. Wah, wah. Oh, it kept the filter. There you go. Excel outsmarted me again. Um, so it kept our filter. Asians and Pacific Islanders are still uh, are still uh, uh, excluded from this from these summaries. Um, if we want to put them back in, just drop it back up to filter. There they are again. Uh, yeah. So and you can. I mean, you could. 
let's do let's get the first name remove the year of birth uh, remove the gender uh, let's remove the filter all right so now we have uh, we should have a list of for those years the those four years we're looking at we should have a sum because we've got a sum we should have a sum of how many babies were named that name over the course of those four years uh, so here we are we've got it here 52 kids named April 38 named June 102 named August <laughs> um, so 1240 named AA Ron and so on so um, now this is great we've got this you could you could copy and paste this paste the values into a new table if you wanted um, we can also use this arrow to sort by A to Z this June must have a space in front of it now for some reason for some reason it thinks that J is we can also do more sort options. Um, this is going to be much more helpful. So we're going to do, let's do descending. So highest at the top by sum of count. So this is going to put the most popular name at the top, which is Jaden. Uh, so Jaden, 2,925 kids named Jaden, 2,809 named Ethan, Jacob, Daniel, and so on. Oh, Aiden. So those are pivot tables. Uh, go explore, have fun.